Catherine, thank you so much. Um, we're going to go ahead and open our first session now, which is on the topic of aging and hearing loss. Why does it matter? So I'll ask our panelists to go ahead and please come up to the table in the front. Uh, and this panel basically serves as an intro or segue into the workshop covering this broader issue of what healthy aging is, what hearing loss is. Uh, the first speaker will be Dr. Luigi Frucci, an epidemiologist and geriatrician, uh, and also scientific director of the National Institute on Aging. Uh, we have Jim Furman, who's a president of the National Council on Aging. And finally, we have Kathy Pitcher Fuller, who's a um, professor of psychology as well as an audiologist at University of Toronto. So we'll start with uh, Dr. Frucci. Thank you, Frank, and thank you to the organizer to this, of this meeting. Uh, it's really an honor to be speaking at this audience. And, and I also want to thank Frank that three years ago came in my office and opened my eyes uh, on this very important problem that is related to the aging. I have the very challenging task of introducing you to the aging uh, field and to what is healthy aging in 10 minutes. And 10 minutes is really a very short time, even if you are a bacteria, imagine if you are a human being. But I'm gonna to try to do my best. And uh, I will say that uh, I could summarize all my talk in this slide. This is really the cycle of uh, a lifetime. And uh, you start really with uh, uh, crawling on the ground, but very, very soon and very, very fast, you start walking and running. And then there is a, a period where very little seems to occur in terms of functional state or over the aging process, but uh, in fact, uh, aging is hiding in the body as a lot more is occurring in this stage that allow us to maintain good physical and cognitive function because there is continuous readjustment and continuous utilization of compensatory strategies that allow you to maintain this activity and this physical and cognitive function in spite of changes and loss that occur during the aging process. And then this idea of reserve, it's important because when functional reserves become to be scarce and compensation doesn't work anymore, there is a moment of decline and the decline accelerate. And most of individuals, I think in the, like, in the lucky individual, it's, it's, it's very, very short. In the less lucky individual, is much longer. There is a period of the disease and disability. Now, this is a summarization of the, you know, what the concept we have in mind uh, about the aging process, but there is uh, incredible variability here. And there are some individuals where this trajectory is actually maintained high up to the last uh, day of your life. There are individuals that uh, um, start uh, showing functional decline because of disease or other causes uh, much earlier in life. And when I give a talk, usually people tell me that, uh, how do you explain this variability? How you deal with that? And I think this is an incredible window of opportunity, in fact, because if uh, aging can be in some individual, be a square trajectory where we are happy and enjoying uh, every moment and every, period, uh, every occasion in life up to the last year of our life means that maybe we can find the secret to extend this experience to many, many more individuals. Okay. But then if we really want to start measuring aging, uh, then we need to have some solid parameter that we're dealing with. And uh, so in the last few years, so we have been talking about uh, what are the domains uh, that are important for the quality of aging. And, uh, you know, to, to make a very long story short, uh, we try to summarize the four domains that are domain variables that can be measured in individual and give us some idea, a measurable idea of how good is aging and what is the quality of aging. And that is extremely important because uh, we cannot change what we cannot measure. We cannot demonstrate that something's effective and we can make aging better if we cannot measure aging. And uh, there are mostly four domains. I'm not gonna talk about them today, but uh, there are changing body composition and change in energy imbalance, homeostasis deregulation and neurodegeneration. And these occur in every living individual, not only human beings, but also in every animal model that we have studied before. So that 
they occur unavoidably with aging and they may be incredibly well compensated. So they have very little effect on the experience of life in that individual, but they, when they measure, occur in everybody. So I'm gonna start by talking about energy imbalance because uh, it gives me a, an example that uh, I can use uh, to then shift to what could be the reason why, in fact, uh, early loss uh, can have an effect across the four domains. It doesn't really have uh, an effect on social isolation, but can actually potentially impact the physiology of aging. It can impact every domain that occur in the aging process. So let's say, what is energy? So in order to work in the environment, in order to do everything we like to do, dancing, reading the book, and talking to a friend, we need energy. And so energy is the amount of energy that you can spend in a day is usually expressed as fitness. You know, the amount of energy that you can generate in the 24 hours. And I'm simplifying a lot here because I'm using this as an example. And then you have this amount of energy that you can use in one day. And then if you don't use it, if you use it too quickly during the day, you don't get enough for the entire 24 hours, at some point you're going to die. And you're going to die because large part of this energy is used uh, just to maintain the function and the vitality of your body. 60 to 70% of the energy your body produces is just to stay alive and doing nothing else. If you wake up in the morning, you're not thinking, you're not eating, you're doing nothing, that is the 60% of energy you need to use. And then there's another amount of energy that is used for other purposes. Now, that is in a healthy individual, but in an individual that is a little bit less healthy, for example, is fighting with disease of disability, part of the extra energy that is maintained is used to maintain this uh, uh, homeostatic equilibrium. And I'll use a very simple example. If you have a flu, you're generating antibodies. Uh, they, the antibody are protein synthesis. Uh, protein synthesis is highly exothermic, use enormous amount of energy. And if you use that energy to create antibody, there is a lot less energy that you have to read the books, to dance, to talk to your friend, to go out for dinner, all the things that we like to like do in life. So in aging, what's happening is that uh, the amount of energy you're given to use every day, the box of energy you receive every morning is become a little bit smaller. And the amount of energy that you need to just stay alive and fight the disease and the disability is a little bit larger. So these shrink, shrink, and shrink. So in fact, disease impact on your energy availability, and by that mechanism, also impact on your functional status. You can uh, think less, you can walk less, you can do a lossless activity that are not directly related to the disease, but because the disease is eating up the energy, you have less energy to do those activities. Now, if we use the same analogy, and I'm gonna skip these slides so that uh, uh, in, in the area of neurodegeneration, and we think about hearing loss, uh, the first thing that comes to mind is that uh, there is a, you know, there is a, a nice uh, American say that uh, you can walk in and chewing gum, and, and the people that are able to walk in and chewing gum. But it, I think it, it's such an incredible intuition. You have two activities that needs to be done at the same time, and in an individual that is healthy and have absolutely no problem, it can be done without even thinking, you know, without, uh, in, in a natural way. You can walk in a natural way without thinking that you're walking, you chewing gum when, without thinking about, but if, for example, you start having problems in your mouth and chewing gum requires some attention, then I can tell you that your walking is going to slow down. There is a principle where we know that uh, if you have a cognitive and a physical activities that are ongoing in your brain, unless you're very, very, very young and very, very fit, uh, you are going to slow down. And, and the, 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 the experience you had probably every day 
is that you see people that slow down on the street because they're using their telephone. And in fact, uh, there are signs that show that. And you know, they are knowing fact there is a car in front of you, that they're going slowing and slowing slow because somebody's talking on the phone, telephone. And you cannot, and, and you want to scream because you want to tell that. You cannot really talk on the telephone while you're driving. And there are other issues, for example, that people that play the organ know that when you're using your pedals, uh, it's really, really difficult to do something really fast in your upper extremity. So there is interference in the brain. And so, and I apologize with, you know, with the, the neurologist here because I'm slicing the brain in a very, very agnostic way. And, and uh, you know, there are part of the brain that uh, are functional reserve in yellow, some of the brain that are important for attention, cognitive function, motor function. There is certainly a part of the brain that deal with hearing. And uh, when you have, uh, having problem with eating, when you have to spend more energy in your brain to understand what is coming from your ears, then what's happening is that this area, this energy expand. And because with aging, the functional reserve is also reduced, this is going to have an impact on the ability to do. In practice, uh, you're doing dual task. You're doing a cognitive task constantly, and that cognitive task is going to interfere with any other function that you're dealing with in that moment. Your balance, your walking, your ability to deal with the um, sudden obstacle, so that the, the entire range of your functional status is going to be affected. So this is my conclusion. All that age is often associated with a straight of brain range susceptibility, reduced plasticity, and depowerated functional reserve. Additional requests to the brain compete with finite resources may have functional consequence and increase fragility. And because of the reduced plasticity, effective adaptation is less likely to occur, and hearing loss may have a negative impact on expected functional domains. Thank you very much for your attention.